gets a little bit bigger, but not that much. Okay? Does that all make sense? You guys see that? Pretty cool, huh? Okay? So I'm going to have him do, when I'm behind taking a video like Jack's doing right now, I'm going to have him shift his hands and his shoulders just a little bit to fill that box. Okay? So that's it. That's all you got to do to fill that box. So that's going to come back just a little bit so it's directly in front of his body. Okay? That's it. Boom. Filled it. Boom. Filled it. Okay? Now bring your gloves, your hands forward just a little bit. Okay? And you can see how bringing your hands forward just a little bit by one or two inches fills that box. Okay? So again, what was that big comment I was saying in the presentation? A little bit of, smooth, a little bit of movement goes a really long way. Okay? And this really shows you guys how small that box is when the puck is at the top of the hash marks. Okay, so if we shift directions and we come over here to the left side, okay, that's pretty realistic right there. Pretty good. Okay? Jack, how's the video look? And you see how his glove is mostly covering his body? Yeah. The only space that's available is right off the top of the pad and right there. And so he's got to understand how to turn his glove and rotate his wrist to fill that space. And all he's got to do here, I'll go show him. I'll, see, he had it pretty well. Closing that box down. Slide underneath your armpit, Regan. You can't see much. Yeah. And that's, you got your arms that's what out. I kept telling these guys is it's 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 Murphy's law. That's as soon me? as you want to react, what do you do? You open up the space and that's where the puck goes. Yeah. Because that's the only space available. You just yeah. you you move out of the way. So a lot of NHL goals are scored as guys yep. actually move out of the way. Yeah. Because they either yeah. don't see the release, they don't track it well, or they feel exposed when they're not really exposed because they don't have a good understanding of their body control. With the uh, young goalies, young goalies, when they go down, they're not on their feet. Oh, yeah. They have to move away from the clock. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for that? Yeah, I just like to have a little bit of an awkward I tend to constantly try and get them two knees, put them forward. Like you keep your feet where they are, and just try to fly forward. Hey, that was perfect. Do you see how you just released them? Yeah. yeah. That was really good. So that, that alone is going to compensate for any small space that you may feel. Now try not to rock yeah, too far forward. Little, little bit forward. That's it. That's all it is. And the video will probably show it better than you feel it. But you see how he's taken away a little bit of that space? Yeah, it's a... Uh... So oh, I, gotta, I don't have it. Right? Yeah. And what ends up happening... On a shot from here, if it's coming to the post of in, you're going to want to react really quickly. Yeah, you want to either turn or whatever. You end up over moving, and what happens? It's always freaking um, Murphy's Law. When you go to react, you end up opening the space and you get beat underneath. Because it's Murphy's Law. Like that's, okay, let me make sure this is really bad. So, 
up there. There you are. That's. Yeah, you can always lean yeah, forward. I have like everything. Yeah. On the first round. Yeah, so see how it's such a little, it can ultimately come down to how you face your pads and gloves to the net, to the puck. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's literally all you have to do. And you're not even at the top of the crease. If you got to the top of the crease, you don't have to move at all. Like this is why bigger goalies don't actually have that much of an advantage. They end up over moving all the time. What's uh, that? You almost wouldn't want to play with this one. Like, you wouldn't want to play this. There's no reason to yeah, because exactly. this is what it teaches you to be economical. You can stay deep. It's so, so, it's so much easier to get back to your post. And this is why you see so many guys playing deeper now. So, so here's the same thing. High goal here. What's the optimal save slot? You you tell me. I, I can't answer that for you because I'm not in your body. So like from here, I would say just, yeah, elbow save, chicken wing, chicken wing. Because the movement and the kinetics of having to react with your glove is you've got to do all sorts of work. Or you have to turn or you've got to do a lot of different stuff when it may seem like you're blocking, but you're not blocking because you're reacting into a blocking position. Does that make sense? Everyone always says it's either react or block, but Tomas taught me the same thing. It's not really a blocking save because you have to react into that position. So you're reacting into a stance that ultimately ends up being a blocking stance. But you're still reacting into it. But, but that's the same selection that you've, that you've, that that you've, you've reacted to because of where the puck is located. You're not just standing there and hoping it hits you. You're getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. But you had, to get, you had to choose to get into that position, right? So it's the same thing when you're presented with, with a situation like this, where puck's right here. Yeah, you're going to lock it. Just in front of Jeff. So right at the bottom of the face-off circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're going to make a really compact butterfly save here. But if you have to react with an elbow, okay, or you just shoulder lean into it, you're still reacting into a blocking mode. Does that make sense? So don't always think about it as react or block. There's actually a third option, which is reacting into a blocking mode, or a blocking position, or a blocking stance. And that's what you really want to think about when you're presented with situations like this. Really start to imagine not how much space is available behind you, but you control the size of the box based on where you, because I can set my feet and then just collapse forward yeah. and take away that space. Okay. Without having to go here, okay, I feel it, now I'm going to try and put out a challenge. You don't have time to do that. It's literally, plays develop so quick. Okay, you've got a threat in the middle. Oh shit, I'm going to back up. Okay, I don't have my post, but that's okay. I'm going to plant my feet, plant my heels, and then collapse forward. And so you can stay off your post just a little bit. The overlap, whatever you want to do, you can do it in overlap, you can do it with your skate on the inside. But on quick transition plays where you don't have time to set up and get set on your post, okay, this helps combat that a little bit because you can stay off your post and then collapse forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you learn this really well, are you trying to picture these lines, like where your box is as the puck is moving? I think that's really hard. It's not like picturing it, but like thinking like, But okay, just understand like... Like where can you go? Yeah, like it's understanding, it's like understand your game plan so you know when you can stay deep, when you can get into a good compact butterfly, and when you can be a little bit looser and a little bit wider. You know what I mean? It's just making yourself more efficient. It's making yourself more efficient and it's just understanding your game plan. That's all it is. It's knowing when you're going to drop into certain stances, when you're going to get into certain, yeah. you know, positions. But you really got to spend some time with these ropes. Yeah. And not a lot of guys want to do it because it's so slow and you're trying to get reps and stuff. But even just the time we're spending here, if you do it once or twice a summer, it's huge. Yeah. Especially if you can grab video and just have that video and know like, okay, well, anything inside or outside of the face-off circles, I know I've got to get out a little bit more, but I can be really compact. Or, shit, you know what, I'm big enough, like, even if he's below the hash marks, I'm still going to play deep. Henrik Lundqvist. Henrik Lundqvist. Jonas Enroth. You never see Jonas Enroth outside the blue paint when he's 5'6". And 
everything about Jonas Enroth with his pads get stand up and get stand, everything is like you never see him here. He's always just like perfectly set right there. He never has any double coverage. And he's so disciplined with his body and his reactions that that's all it is. So when you watch Jonas Enroth drills over uh, highlights, like, you're like, how is he so small, but he's like hardly ever moving? Well, he's just always he's all box control. He's just year after year after year. So anywhere the puck is, he knows exactly how far he has to challenge, and he knows how much space he's filling. So it never looks like he's reacting or extending or doing all these flashy stuff because he's just like, I know where I'm at. Like I know how big the box is. So.